Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Our Ketogenic Life. Uh, excited to be here today. Uh, this is a topic that I love to talk about, and that is exercise. Uh, I know some people are on, on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, they've never exercised, they loathe it, they, it's just something that they do not want to do. They have no, no motivation to do so. So we're gonna to try to help uh, each of those groups uh, progress in their health so that they can get uh, to where they want to go and have the health that they want to have. So before we get started, remember uh, we are transitioning just from a ketogenic podcast to a more functional medicine type podcast. Eventually this is going to be called Kevin Davis Health. Uh, and uh, when we make that transition, we'll let you know. We're still working on some of the branding part of it and all the back end part, but uh, we want to be able to serve you uh, not only in the foods that you eat, uh, but in everything. And that's one of the topics that we're talking about today is uh, exercise. I've got some notes written here. I've got some questions that people have been asking me. Uh, so I'm going to try to answer those questions as we go along uh, through this. Uh, but first, remember, uh, we have a new book out. It's called uh, Young and Strong at 40 and Beyond. If you're interested in, in getting that, it's on Amazon. And if you do get that, you know, one thing I'd really like to have is uh, your feedback. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're going to, if you think it's a good book and you find it uh, valuable, we would love to give you, uh, have you give us a five-star rating on uh, Amazon. If uh, you have questions about it, if you found something that's very interesting uh, or you need to have more information on the subject, I would love to know that too. So just drop us a line, uh, you know, and we can um, uh, try to address any kind of questions that you may have. So let's talk about exercise. And I purposely wanted to title this uh, podcast, Five Ways to Start an Exercise Journey. And what I mean by that is, you know, if, if you've never exercised, you take me 15 years ago, uh, very rarely did I exercise. You know, I played sports in high school, got away from it in college, I did uh, some running every now and then. Uh, but 15 years ago, I, I really didn't do a whole lot of exercising. Uh, you know, if you've heard my story, you know, at that time, uh, even in high school, I couldn't do a pull up. Uh, you know, uh, my upper body strength was really weak. And uh, it was always kind of like embarrassing. Uh, I, I was intimidated to go to the gym because, you know, you walk into a gym and, you know, these guys are pumping all this iron and, you know, they're benching, you know, 225 pounds and uh, you're barely getting 100. Uh, they're doing all these kind of exercises that, you know, there's no way you could do that. And so you just quit. And, you know, with my journey, I got to the point at that time where I just wanted, I just, I didn't care. You know, um, I was going to go in and do what I could do. And that was my exercise journey. And that's where it started at. And now I've progressed to where I'm able to do a whole lot more. You know, I can do a lot more pull-ups uh, than I've ever thought I would imagine to be able to do. I uh, lift more weights. And now it just becomes a part of me. It's my life's journey. It's one of the things that I've included in my life that has helped me uh, get to the health that I'm at, where I'm at, and also maintain the health. So I just want to encourage you, as we, as we go through these things, there's a lot of information that you can get on exercise. And, you know, sometimes, it, again, it can be overwhelming. Um, you know, a lot of people want to know exactly how many, ex uh, how many different types of exercises should I have. You know, uh, how many times a day sh or a week should I exercise for how long? What kind of exercising should I do? And it really gets overwhelming to a point where people just kind of quit. You know, they think was, this is way too much. But one of the things that's helped me, uh, especially with my online clients, is a book by James Clare. It's called Atomic Habits. And it just breaks down developing a habit on, uh, on an easy basis, uh, step by step, so that you can start the process of incorporating exercising into your program. And at the end, we're going to talk about five things that I think if you just start doing these things over a period of time, uh, you're going to get to the point where you can um, um, incorporate exercise into your lifestyle and it just becomes a part of who you are. And just a little side note, uh, this is kind of like how my brain uh, operates. If we are going on a trip somewhere, uh, if we're going to be in a hotel for a weekend, uh, if we're going on vacation, you know, 
a lot of people will look at uh, restaurants, uh, activities, and things like that. What are they going to do? One of the main things that I look for is a hotel that has a gym, and I want pictures of the gym because I just don't want a treadmill and elliptical, and that's what they call a gym because I do a lot more than that. Or if they don't have that, where is the nearest gym I could enroll or do a guest pass for you know a day or two or a week or depending on where we're at? That's one of the first things that I look for when we're going somewhere. So again, rewind 15 years ago, it wasn't like that. You know, uh, it's probably where we're gonna eat is the first thing I would look for. So that's kind of like what, how it's incorporated into my life, into my journey. And I just wanna say that because it can uh, uh, encourage you to do the same thing. So I've got some list of some questions here I'm gonna try to answer. And again, this is from uh, uh, things that I've been asked and I think that it's important is probably uh, to you because you probably have the same questions and when we wrap this up I'm going to tell you some uh, things that you can do to ju just get started uh, on your journey. So first question is what are the best overall exercises for your health and fitness? Well you know all of them you know and probably the, the most important uh, answer to that question is what do you like to do to get started? You know, uh, with me, uh, I didn't really like uh, lifting weights when I get started. That was a progression. So where do you get started as far as like what, you know, the best overall exercises? I'm going to give you some specifics here in a second. But first thing is, I think if, if you're somebody who does not like to exercise, I think the first thing you have to do is uh, find something that you like to do. You know, it may be just going for a walk, you know, and that's great, that's a good, good place to get started. You might like to play tennis, that's a great place to get started. Uh, you know, just find something that you like to do. And, and that's probably the best thing you can do to get started with an exercise program to make it uh, part of your journey in your life. But if you want specifics about overall uh, exercises, I think the important thing to take away from this is you need a variety of different exercises. You know, there's not just one exercise that is the best. You know, people who just lift weights, you know, that's not going to be you know, hit all the uh, uh, targets that you need to have. People who just run, that doesn't help as well. Uh, people uh, that just want to do aerobics, uh, that's not hitting everything as well. So what we want to do is we want to incorporate different types of exercises. And one of the neat things that we do with our online clients is we give them a program uh, so that they can follow to work out. And it includes different things. Uh, I think you need to have some kind of weight resistant training. Uh, you need to be able to lift some weights. Uh, you know, and that helps you with your daily life. It helps you with uh, things such as uh, carrying groceries, uh, you know, moving something around in the house. You know, if you're used to lifting some heavy things, then you're going to be able to incorporate those into your daily lives. I think another important part is some kind of aerobic exercise. Now, there's a thing called zone two exercising. Basically, you take 180 minus your age and you want to keep your heart rate around that area. And you want to do that for about 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, doing that a couple times a week will be uh, awesome for you. Another thing that I think you need to incorporate with your exercise program and again, you don't have to do all these at once, and uh, you want to be careful about the progression, but I think one of the things that helps a lot of people with, especially if they're trying to lose uh, body fat, is uh, sprinting. Uh, sprinting is an awesome type of exercise, and the good thing about sprinting is uh, you can do a lot of um, a sprinting in 10 minutes. You know, if you do sprinting for 30 seconds on, a minute off, 30 seconds on, a minute off, and you do that for 10 minutes, you're done. You know, that's a great workout. And then finally, I think the fourth uh, type of exercise you need to do is some kind of long uh, endurance type of uh, training. And what I mean by that is going on a long bike ride, uh, going for a, a slow jog, uh, doing something to where you're doing it for about 30 minutes, uh, but it's at a really even, uh, easy pace. It's not something that you're sprinting uh, or you're really out of breath. Uh, and you're uh, just doing something to get out. One of the, probably the one of the best things you could do for that part is go for a hike, especially if you got some hills, going up and down some hills uh, for you know 30 minutes on a weekend. Uh, that's going to hit a lot of areas. So when we talk about what's the best type of exercising, we want to incorporate different type of exercises uh, within your routine. I personally had a, um, uh, a Concept 2 rower. I really love that. 
it helps with my legs and my upper body as well. And doing 20 minutes on that really is a workout. They get your heart rate going. So you need to find some stuff that's interesting to you, but try to hit some uh, strength training. Uh, try, to, uh, try to hit some like uh, sprinting. Uh, some uh, zone two uh, uh, cardio where you know zone two is pretty much where you you can have a conversation but you're not totally out of breath and then some easy type of uh, uh, long distance type of exercises as walking on a hill an easy bike ride those type of things now the other question is well okay I'm getting ready to get started now how often should I exercise a lot of that depends on your schedule to begin with uh, you know, if you do like what I do, most of the time I exercise six days a week. I don't think I don't exercise on Sundays anymore. Uh, I take that as the Lord's Sabbath and trying to obey Him. But I exercise six days a week, and that might be uh, way too much for a lot of people. So when you first get started, if you can just do a couple days a week, uh, that would be great. Now, one of the things that we do in our genetic reporting for our, our online clients is that we. Uh, check and see uh, as far as their genes what the kind of recovery do they have and what I mean by that is how many uh, days does it take you to recover from an exercise uh, sometimes people have a slow recovery and some people are fast recoveries and it really can uh, your genetics can really kind of help uh, dial that in some so I would I would at least try to start off with a couple days a week uh, if uh, if you want to have an idea of what you should be doing long term, I think four days, maybe five days would be the best uh, with like a day off on Wednesday and a day off on Sunday. Uh, and that would probably be the best for most people to shoot for. And again, co incorporating different exercises on different days like we just discussed in the first question. Now, the third question is, um, what what is the best time of day to exercise? Now, that's tricky uh, because everybody's schedule is different to begin with. You know, uh, with me, my evenings are kind of like jam-packed. I get off work, uh, my grandkids may have a basketball game, I may have some calls, uh, may, uh, you know, have some meetings and different things like that. And for me, if I waited to exercise to the end of the day, it's probably not going to happen because I got so many things going on. And personally, for me, if I exercise late in the day, what's going to happen is I, I can't sleep. It takes me a little while to wind down to be able to go to sleep. So I exercise in the morning. I get up uh, in a, uh, around you know 5.45 every morning. I'm out in the gym by 6.30 and I work out for about an hour and then I'm uh, shower and come back to work and go, about, go off to work. So that works for me. You know, some people may have a schedule where they can do it mid-morning, mid-afternoon. So first of all, I think you need to find a time that you can do it and do it on a consistent basis. Now, do you have to do it the same time every day? No, you may be, you know, uh, evenings may work for you and then on a Saturday, uh, you can do it on Saturday morning, which is awesome. So you can change it up and sometimes that even helps with your body as far as preventing adapting to different types of exercise. But if you're looking at like, I think if you're lo really looking for uh, weight loss, I think doing fasted working out, working out in the morning is probably the best. Now, when I say fasted workouts in the morning, you know, if you're doing strength training, you probably need to take some amino acids before you work out in the morning uh, because you want to have that uh, as far as, uh, you know, as far as your muscles and recovery. If you're doing the fasted, car if you're doing cardio or zone two cardio or you're going for a long walk or something like that, I think it's an awesome time if you're, if you're, in, if you're in this and you need to lose some fat, uh, that will be a great time because what happens is your, your liver and your muscles, well, your liver is going to have about 2,000 calories of uh, uh, glycogen, which is stored glucose. And once you use that up, if you're doing some kind of workout, uh, then your body can kind of become in a, a fat burning mode and you're able to burn fat. So really depends on your goal and it depends on your schedule. You know, I think the first thing is you just need to be able to do it. It may not be the perfect time. You know, you may be able to do it in the afternoon. You still need to lose maybe some fat, uh, you know, some extra fat on you that you want to lose. And the only time you can do this is in the um, afternoon because you've maybe got your kids off to work or uh, kids off to school or something like that. And that's fine. Just fine. Just do it when you can. But if you want to lose fat, uh, if you want to burn that, I think doing some uh, exercising in the morning fasting is probably the best time uh, to, do, to do that. Now, the next question that I had from uh, folks was, what's the difference between working out at home and working out at a gym? Now, I personally like working out at a gym. Uh, 
I like working out at home. So what I did is I made a home gym. So it takes care of both things. And I was uh, fortunate uh, and I was able to do that. Uh, and I'm, gonna have, I'm, I'm actually in the process of getting some exercising together, uh, some workout routines, uh, and uh, get them on YouTube so that you'll be able to follow along and see what I'm talking about as far as the exercising that I'm doing. But, you know, I think that preference or that decision is up to you. Uh, Danae, uh, she does not like going to a gym. She will not go to a gym, as a matter of fact. If there's a bunch of guys there that are working out, you know, heavy weights, that's not what she's there for. Therefore, she's not going to go there. Uh, so she does mostly at home. And, you know, she does some of the uh, body weight exercises and we've got some dumbbells at home now in the house that she can use. So I, I don't really think it matters where you do it at. I think it where you, where you need to be consistent. Now, if, if you can find somebody, uh, a partner, and you're going to a gym, I think that helps with your accountability. I think that helps as far as like you maintain the workout routine if you've got somebody there that's counting on you to be there. I think the other thing that the gym offers uh, sometimes is some direction, especially if they have some kind of a coach there uh, that can show you how to do exercises and um, you know proper form and different things that you can do. So I really I think it really depends on, on your preference with that. And But I think, again, it's just one of those things where you just need to do it. That kind of leads into my next question is, should you hire a personal trainer or go at it alone? Uh, it really depends on where you're at as far as uh, your, uh, how comfortable you are uh, with exercising. You know, if you've never been in a gym before, it's again, like for me, it's the same way. It can be intimidating. Uh, and I think sometimes we just have to get over that. We just have to be able to uh, just start doing it. If, uh, if you don't know what to do, um, then hiring somebody is going to be probably a, a benefit for you. And that's one of the things we're gonna to try to include on our, our YouTube channel for our exercising, is just uh, for our clients, is just some uh, uh, direction in that area. I always like to use this, this example, you know, like if I'm trying to plant a garden, and we did that a couple years ago when COVID started. And I've used this example before if you've listened to us. But like for me, I didn't really have time. I really didn't have the interest in going on YouTube, uh, Googling uh, how to start a garden. Um, I could probably do that. Uh, actually, I know I could do that, but it's probably gonna take a lot of my time. It's gonna take a lot of my time to figure out who can I trust, uh, who's gonna give me direction, uh, and who's gonna give me the right uh, things to do to get things started as far as a garden. Me and Danae had never done that before, and we went to uh, plant a garden for you know vegetables and things like that. So what I did is I hired somebody to come up and show me how to do that. Uh, what kind of soil do I need to mix? How deep does it need to uh, be? Uh, we made some raised garden beds. You know, and I just had them come up and just show me how to do things. And, uh, you know, instead of me taking several hours or a, a week or two to figure out everything, uh, within an hour or two, we had everything done. He showed me exactly how to mix the soil, where to plant things, uh, and it just gave me so many different things that I probably wouldn't have got just by searching things on my own. So really, should you hire a personal trainer? You know, I think it's probably best to hire one because it keeps you accountable and they're gonna give you some exercises to do. And it also gonna give you some direction, gonna give you some safety things as far as what to follow. So I, I do think it's important that you do um, um, consider hiring a trainer. And you know, if you want us to help you, obviously we do some online coaching and things like that. We'll be more than happy to help you do that. Uh, but I think uh, for your own sake, at least to get started, to get a knowledge base, uh, I think hiring a, a trainer is probably going to be uh, one of the best things that you can do. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. If you have other questions about some things, I would love to answer those for you as well. But that's just some of the questions that, that I've gotten here recently. Now, I want to go to a little bit of why you want to exercise. And this is going to be obvious, uh, but I, I just want to reiterate there are a lot of benefits uh, to uh, exercising. Uh, obviously, one of the things that helps is it helps control your weight. And how does it do this? I think it affects your glucose and your insulin. Uh, if you're building muscle, again, we recommended you know, um, uh, strength training. You're going to build muscle. And when you build muscle, you're going to be able to store more glucose. 
Uh, that glucose is not going to be in your blood. Therefore, it's not your insulin is not going to be uh, stimulated and you're not going to have a high insulin level. If you're having a high insulin level, remember insulin is a fat storage hormone. If you increase your insulin, you're going to increase your fat storage. So if you can decrease the amount of glucose that's in your, in your, in your blood, uh, obviously it's not going to go down to zero, but you're going to decrease it. You're going to have less insulin on board. You're going to have less fat storage. So it does help with your fat, uh, with your weight. Um, it reduces things, risk factors for things like heart disease, uh, cancer, um, uh, dementia, and because dementia is now be called is now being referred to as diabetes type three. They think it has a lot to do with uh, insulin. Uh, if you listen to our podcast uh, a couple weeks ago, I think it was on vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D is important for your bones. Exercise helps with your bones as well too. It helps with your muscles. Uh, again, if you have more muscle strength, the older that you get, uh, the more the chances of you uh, falling is going to be less, and the chances of you increasing your longevity uh, or your health span is going to be increased. Uh, one thing that exercise uh, really does help with me, especially where I do it first thing in the morning, uh, exercise helps me with my sleep. You know, if I'm getting up at 5:45 to exercise, you know, by nine o'clock I'm ready to go to bed. And uh, it really does help with with that. So that's some of the reasons that you really need to you know concentrate on maybe incorporating some exercising into your lifestyle, um, and and that also just make you feel good. You know, when your clothes fit better, uh, you feel better about yourself. You know, especially if you're up in front of people, if you speak to people. Uh, you know, if you're uh, say you're a teacher, you know, you just have that more confidence. I think uh, when you're when you're able to. Um, uh, exercise and change your the way your body looks now where do we start and uh, this is going to be some things that I think will be uh, beneficial for anybody who is not exercising at this point and this is going to be on a continuum this is not going to be I want you to go out and do all this tomorrow uh, the first uh, couple things I'm going to talk about doesn't cost any money at all uh, it's just getting up and doing it so the first thing I need I need you to do is first thing in the morning, very first thing in the morning, uh, you need to get up and you need to do some push-ups and you need to do some body weight squats. Now, you may be saying, well, I can't do a push-up. Well, just do a girl's type push-up on your knees. But just do some push-ups. If you do one or two, that's all you can do. That's fine. Just get started doing some push-ups and doing some body weight squats. Body weight squats do not require any equipment. Uh, it does require some good form. And if you have questions about that, you know, let us know because we don't want you to get hurt. But all I want you to do is the very first thing in the morning is to do some push-ups and some body weight squats. Just one set of each. However many push-ups you can do and however many body weight uh, squats you can do. That's very simple. Anybody can do that. And probably within three or four minutes, you're done. That's all. That's the very first step of the new habit is just to get up, use the restroom, of course, probably, but then just do the push-ups and do the body weight squats. That's all you need to do. Now, once you start doing that, probably the next best thing, and this incorporates into what we call what our functional medicine is, is, is we're incorporating many different things as far as your overall health. After you do that, what I want you to do is once you get that, into, and it's a routine, you're doing the push-ups and the body weight squats, and then I want you to go for a walk. Uh, it could be on a treadmill inside, preferably I would rather you be outside with the sunrise coming up because it helps with your eyes and helps reset your circadian rhythms. There's other reasons for this. But what I would like for you to do, especially if you're trying to drop a few pounds, if, if you have some excess body fat, is go for a walk. First thing in the morning, you don't have any, you've not eaten, you've got this glycogen stored, use that up, and then you're able to be, become a fat burning machine later on during the day. So just do some push-ups, do some body weight squats, go for a walk. Could be 10 minutes. doesn't have to be long. Just get out and move before you do anything else. This is before your coffee. Uh, this is before your, uh, of course, breakfast. Uh, this is before anything. And you may think, oh, I don't have time. Well, you take three or four minutes for body weight exercise, uh, uh, squats and push-ups, and then you do a 10-minute walk, 15 minutes. Just get up 15 minutes earlier, and you're done. You're done with the exercise. So those two things does not cost you a dime. It just costs you some time. And uh, you know, if you need some accountability to that, find somebody else that's going to do this as well. And then you guys just get up, text each other in the morning. You don't have to be a long text. Just say, I did it or I didn't do it. And be accountable to somebody and that's gonna help get you motivated and get you started. 
Now the next thing is going to, the next couple things is going to be, uh, may cost you some money, but it's not going to cost you a lot of money, all right? Again, you can do these at home, all right? Uh, third, thing is, th third thing is, especially if you never exercise, is buy some exercise bands. Exercise bands are very inexpensive, and you want to get it, probably the smallest ones that you can get, not the big thick ones. Uh, I made a mistake and bought a couple of really big thick ones. I've never used them because they are so hard to use. Start with the small ones, and then uh, let, look for our YouTube channel coming up. We're going to have some exercises for uh, a band workout that you can do at home. And that's going to get resistance training. It's going to put you in the zone two because you're going to be out of breath on the exercises that we're, that we're going to show you uh, later on on our YouTube channel once I get that done. And then you're going to be able to start the exercise program just using bands. And again, you can do that in your house. And the fourth thing is uh, dumbbell exercises. We're going to do some videos on that too as well. We're going to give you some uh, uh, videos to follow that you can do a home dumbbell, a dumbbell uh, like a full body uh, workout. We'll probably get more specific and, and just give like a shoulder workout and a, and a back workout and different things like that. But for the beginning, we're just going to get into a full body uh, dumbbell workout. And, you know, uh, a lot of people want to go out and buy some big dumbbells. But usually for the workout we're going to show you, you know, depending on your strength, you know, you can even go from like a five pound dumbbell to a 20 pound dumbbell. And that's all you need. You don't need the whole rack of them. All you need is probably some light ones to begin with. And you can always go back and buy more as you get stronger. And then the fifth thing is join a gym. I think joining a gym, uh, especially if you can get some accountability with some partners going to the gym with you. Well, it's just kind of like expand your repertoire as far as the type of exercises that you can do. And, you know, once you get past, you know, the body weight squats, you're going for a walk, you're using in bands, you're using some dumbbells at home, then hopefully your body's getting used to some movement and getting to used to some exercising. And then you can start incorporating some things like squats and deadlifts and bench presses. And those are the things that we really want to concentrate on as far as, you know, increasing our muscle mass and our strength, uh, and that will help us uh, increase our longevity and our health span uh, to live a longer, healthier life. And, and as a bonus, I think the thing, you can need, the thing you need to think about is hiring a coach. I think uh, maybe hiring a coach uh, for uh, safety, uh, show you how to do things, uh, give you some uh, tips on some workouts, and also that the area of accountability. Because when you hire a coach, it's just like when someone hires me as their health coach, you know, they pay some money. You know, they want some results. They've got some skin in the game. So if you get to the point where you hire somebody and you're doling out some money for it, more than likely you're going to stay with it. I've had some people who've hired me as a coach who I think that if I would have done it for free, they would have quit on me two months ago because, you know, it got too hard or they didn't want to do it. But they had, they had some skin in the game. They paid some money and therefore they want to keep doing it because, you know, everybody doesn't want to just throw money away and um, not get uh, some value from it. So hopefully that's helped as far as your exercising. Uh, hopefully that uh, you know we will get these YouTube uh, videos going come up and coming to give you some ideas. Uh, if you have questions about it or certain routines, I would love to talk to you about those. Just drop us a line. If you ever want us to be your health coach, uh, you know if, to see if we're a good fit, uh, you can let me know and I can send you out our questionnaire and uh, see if uh, both of us are good fits for each other. But let's turn our attention now uh, to our catechisms. Uh, we are on number 44, and that is what is justification? It is, God, it is God regarding sinners as if they've never sinned and granted them righteousness. So one of the things that I always think about with justification and with, uh, with, with Jesus uh, who uh, God who forgive, forgave our sins? Think of justification as just as, as just as if we've never sinned. That's the way God looks at us. When when we ask Him uh, to be our Lord and Savior, and um, we ask Him in our heart, and we confess it with our mouth, He looks at us as if we've never sinned. Now I think sometimes we carry those past sins on us, and that's not what He really wants from us. He wants us to know that He is that we are justified in Him, not justified in ourselves, but justified in Him, just as, as if we've never sinned. So I just want to encourage you, that relationship that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ is the best relationship that you can ever have. 
And uh, if you have questions about that, obviously.